With the new Tunnel 17 update, we will also be getting a new troop as well as a new spell. Both of these are incredibly strong and I am going to show you how you can best use them in this video. So let's not waste any more time and dive right into sneak peek number two. And let's start off by upgrading our Town Hall. Didn't we do that already yesterday? Yes, but there was something hidden which I wasn't allowed to show you before. And if you see correctly, on the bottom left corner on Town Hall 17, we will be getting a new defense. Yes, that's right. On Town Hall 17, we will be getting a new defense called the Fire Spitter. And not just one of them, but we unlock two. And this defense is incredibly interesting. More on that later. Because first, we will be taking a look at the new level of the barracks. Because in Town Hall 17, we can upgrade our barracks again. And with that, we unlock the Thrower. And the Thrower is a very interesting troop. It has the same range as the Super Archer, but it has a lot more HP. So you can really do a lot with this new troop. As you can see, two of them do need a lot of time to take out the cannon, but also survive with a ton of HP because this troop on the maximum level on level 3 has 2100 HP. And that's for 18 troop capacity, that's surely a lot of hit points. So let's directly take a look at how we can use this troop in action. Yes, we can once again spam this troop, take a lot of them inside of our army composition, and we will be able to crush some bases with that. Use a little warden walk to funnel one side. We can use a yeti blimp with the new three yetis with the 55 troop capacity to take out one of the other sections of the base. And also with the new lightning spells, with the new lightning spell level, we will be able to take out a huge portion of the core. And then we can just spam in all of those troops and they will overrun the base. As you can see, clan castle has been lured. Three of those merge defenses have been taken out by our battle blimp. Zaps worked out perfectly, even taking out the new fire spitter. With that, we now send in all of our throwers into the base. We have one super witch into the mix, because why not? Use the archer queen for funneling the one side, and then just send in our king into the main push. And you can see how much damage these throwers can do whenever they are just clumped up. They will just rain down fire onto all of those defenses, completely crushing them apart. Kano takes care of the Town Hall. Town Hall, of course, is no problem at all because, well, it has no Giga Bomb. And also the Giga Bomb now, just take a look, it almost takes out all of those throwers. If, they, if there weren't any healers on top of that, or if there, for example, were a few giant bombs next to it, all of those throwers would have been taken out. So you really need to watch out with the Giga Bomb. The Giga Bomb is such a strong defense. You can do a lot of work with it. If used correctly, this can completely screw up an attack, even though you know exactly where the strap is. But of course, now all the throwers survive. And with that, the, the, the base has no chance of defending this attack strategy. It is incredibly strong. And of course, this is just a spam variant. If you come up with any cool ideas this troop can really really fit into the meta very well of course i said yesterday we will move on to an air base meta but i do think that this that this new thrower troop will surely be a huge part of the meta but of course you don't need to completely spam in this troop you can also be very creative when it comes to taking out certain defenses for example for the new air meta or those new dragon level or the new electro dragon level you can also use this troop to snipe out for example air defenses that are relatively uh, far outside of the base you can just send in one of those thrower troops and he will take out the air defense and mostly outrange any of those defenses quick reminder if you're planning on buying any in-game items like gold pass or any offers then make sure that you are using a credit code Code RHBB to support this channel would of course be much appreciated. But now let's also take a look at the new spell, which will be the Revive spell. And what does it do? Well, as the name is already telling you, it is able to revive heroes. And whenever you have it on a max level, the revived hero will get back 75% of its health. And that is surely a lot and with this new spell you can of course do a lot of cool interactions if you for example have the auto ability of the heroes off you can for example let your hero go down then revive it and you still have the ability for later into the attack even though your hero already went down the wolf for example doesn't know this case you're starting a queen charge 
and you're looking at a different section of the base because you need to take care of your flame flinger because a few skeletons are going at your flame flinger and of course in the meantime your queen is being taken out very unfortunate but not with the revive spell you just drop the revive spell right on top of your queen and well hey she's back with 75 percent of its uh, of her hit points you can now do exactly what she's supposed to do take out the whole bottom section of the base and of course you can still have her ability after she is being revived if you have the auto ability off but of course if you have the auto ability turned off then you really need to watch out that you surely use it after your queen has been revived. Of course, you can bring in multiple revive spells, but it is of course a lot of spell capacity to just revive your queen over and over and over and over again. One revive spell can surely be a great addition to a queen charge or any attack in general. And I do think with this new revive spell, people can come up with very, very cool scenarios and very cool tricks how you can pluck apart a base. So I'm looking forward to your ideas very, very much. But then there's of course one more thing we haven't talked about and that is the new Fire Spitter defense. And this defense is a completely new concept. It has the same range as a sweeper, so the, def uh, so the defender needs to pick out which angle the Fire Spitter will be facing. It's 20 projectiles and these will hit multiple targets. They can also shoot through targets and hit targets behind those targets. Yes, this defense is incredibly complicated. It's easier being said, it shoots down at multiple targets and it deals a lot of damage. This fire spitter is actually very random. It can shoot both ground troops as well as air troops, but it doesn't always hit its target. But if the target is closer to the fire spitter, of course, the chance of it being hit by multiple projectiles is of course higher and the fire spitter does more damage. You can compare it a little bit to a shotgun. Whenever a troop is closer, more projectiles will hit. Whenever a troop is further away, less projectiles will hit. Whenever a troop is closer, more damage. Whenever a troop is further away, it's, there is a higher chance of projectiles not hitting, therefore dealing less damage. And if the projectiles hit their target, this defense can be incredibly devastating and deal a ton of damage. And as you can see in this little example, this new defense can be incredibly devastating when it comes to small non-tanky troops, like for example skeletons or witches. This defense is easily capable of taking out a huge group of witches on his own. And also, it is very very hard to tank this defense. You can't really distract it, for example, with any other defense. You will just put a golem in front of your queen and the golem will of course distract for the defense so the queen can do a lot of damage, but not with the fire spitter. If the queen is standing behind the golem, she will still take a lot of damage because his projectiles fly through the golem and hit a target behind the golem. And the queen will lose HP very very quickly and can easily be taken out by this fire spitter. But now with these balloons you can see if the troops have a little more HP they can surely get their way up to the fire spitter and take it out. But of course that doesn't mean that it's bad against loons it's just a little more random. In one scenario the loons will go down within two seconds, in another scenario they can take out the fire spitter. But even though the fire spitter is mostly a swarm killer, so it does a lot of splash damage to smaller swarm troops, it is also a great tank killer. For example when the golem is very very close to the fire spitter it can deal a lot of damage when it is farther away of course then not so much because a lot of the projectiles will will miss but whenever a golem is standing directly next to the fire spitter it will go down in no time but within the sneak peek there is another thing we have to talk about and that is the helper hut and this is a new building where you can assign the builder's apprentice as well as the new lab assistant. No more trying to click onto the, your town hall and accidentally clicking on the builder apprentice. This is gone. The builder apprentice now moved into his own little hut. And unlike the builder apprentice, this lab assistant is actually free to unlock. So Supercell really got very, very grateful there. This lab assistant can be unlocked on level 1 for free. And can also be unlocked at Town Hall 9 instead of Town Hall 10 when it comes to the Builder Apprentice. And just like with the 
Apprentice Builder, this will speed up your laboratory work. So your research will be boosted by this lab assistant. And also a change we will be getting with this new update is now you can assign both your lab assistant as well as your builder apprentice to a certain upgrade and it will constantly boost this upgrade every 24 hours until the upgrade is finished. So no more needing to log into Clash of Clans and assigning your builder apprentice every 23 hours whenever it's done with the assignment. Whenever you assign it to an upgrade, it will keep boosting this upgrade over and over and over. So both the lab assistant as well as the apprentice builder have certainly gotten a lot stronger. But of course, the price to max it out stays the same. Both for the Builder Apprentice, it's still 8,500 gems. And for the Lab Assistant, it will also be 8,500 gems to level it up to level 12. So that's surely a lot, but I think other content creators have calculated for you guys when it's surely paying off and if it's really worth it to upgrade it to the maximum level. But that's everything for this sneak peek. Of course, there are still a few questions left, which we will be answering very, very soon. So make sure to subscribe. And with that, I would say see you guys soon with the next video. Until then, see ya and bye bye.